surprise me. So why do, do they ask? ask? <laughs> Всем привет! Меня зовут Серыш, я кореянка, сейчас работаю в США. Вы можете угадать, кто она, откуда она. Сегодня я спрошу 10 вопросов про Гонконг. Давайте узнаем про Гонконг и каково это учиться и жить в США как интернациональная студентка. Если у вас будут вопросы, пишите в комментариях. Hello everyone, my name is Scarlett Chu. I am an international student from Hong Kong. I'm currently a freshman at the University of Notre Dame in the US, double majoring in finance and economics with a minor in sociology. Online, you might know me as Something Scarlett. I have a YouTube channel where I post blog and study related content. Thank you for having me today. I have been you because I watched your video on в Ютубе, в этом университете, она снимает блоги про университетскую жизнь в США. I'm working as a Korean language PA, teaching assistant in Norway. And one time Scarlett visited my class. Yes, it was so fun. I learned, okay, I didn't understand anything. I don't know Korean. <laughs> But it was so fun to just sit and listen and see all the other students learn Korean here in the US. Thank you so much. She, she told me that she wanted to attend the class And she really came to the class. Yes, I did. I had yeah. free time, so I was, I was like, I want to go to Charity's class. I want to see. <laughs> so I came. Did you find any similarities between Korean language and the language that you speak? So your first language is Cantonese. Cantonese. Yes. So people in Hong Kong, we speak Cantonese, which is a dialect of Chinese. What when people hear Chinese, it's usually Mandarin, which is the biggest Chinese. Uh, or at least the biggest version of the Chinese language and Cantonese is a dialect of it. We all use Chinese characters. Um, Mandarin uses simplified characters and Cantonese uses traditional. So it has more strokes for characters and the grammar conjugation and the way of speaking it is quite different. So my first language is Cantonese even though I speak both Cantonese and Mandarin. And comparing Cantonese and Mandarin with Korean, um, because they're similar roots with the languages, I do think there are some similarities. For example, um, in Korean, I think exercise is undong. Right, and undong. Cantonese, it will be wandong. Oh. And Mandarin, it will be yundong. Yundong. Yes. And for example, Daehaksung University. Daehaksung. Daehaksung University student. In Cantonese, it will be Bai Hao San, and Mandarin will be Da Xue Shun. So you can see a little bit similarities. Yeah. I think Cantonese and Korean are more similar than Chinese and Korean. Some words, yes. Um, for example, Ha Zhang, Ha Zhong, um, Xi Gan, Xiu Jin. Yes. Xi Gan. And Cantonese, it will be Xi Gan. Oh, it's the same. Yes. Xi Gan. And this. Legal, legal. <gasps> really? Yeah. Uh, we can compare the sentence structure in Korean. I say, 나는 노트북을 본다. 북한 대학. We say, 나는 I and then notebook and then C. Yes. So our structure is a little bit different. You say, we still follow the English structure. Yeah. Like we see the computer. Right. And in Korean, we say, we computer see. Mm. It's nice to know. We don't have strict honorifics. In Mandarin, if we want to say you with more um, respect, we don't say ni, we say ni. Mm. And I am. Um, that doesn't exist in Cantonese, even though oh. we don't say it usually. For example, you call a boy, we call an older male hyong, or a younger girl, we call an older guy oppa. We all say gogo, or go -go. in Cantonese gogo. For female, it will be Nuna or Oni. And we would say Jie Jie. Or in Cantonese, Jie Jie. Hong Denim, we have. In Mandarin, Xue Jie, Xue Zhang. In Cantonese, Si Jie, Si Heng. I didn't know about that. You have the same concept of Hong Denim. Hong Denim. Which doesn't exist in the US, right? <laughs> Mm, it's so hard to translate. When we try to translate Nuna or like an Opa or like Hyung and stuff, it's. <laughs>
it goes off it comes off as older sister older brother older sister and they, boy girls and yes and then it will be so so confusing for the americans because they will never call like someone older than them like they're just sister yeah they but just call their names it's just an honorific that it's a sign of respect a sign of intimacy and yeah yeah a lot of intimacy so korean people when we get closer we say we call the honor fix not names so like if you're older than me i would say Onni, how yes. are you Onni? like this i know some of the korean <laughs> students here they call each other Onni and like mm. Kyung and stuff. I, I notice it it's very sweet personally it reminds even though it's not my culture i share the same sentiments of like wanting to call someone that so i i think it's very sweet can you call someone older than you? Jie <laughs> Jie Yeah, we sometimes do that too Oh Is it rude to call older sister's name? Not so much mm -hmm. um, I feel like Korean culture is more emphasized um, But in Chinese culture, it's sometimes you do it if you really want to That's up to you But I think you already know a lot of Korean words you mentioned onni oppa and undong do you know any other korean phrases or words did you learn korean how do you know those words <laughs> <laughs> um i follow a lot of k-pop mm. groups i'm a big fan of k-pop um so i hear some korean words and stuff and here at notre dame i have a lot of korean friends who speak korean so i sometimes can guess what they're saying too oh. yes when we met for the first time, I remember that you said 안녕하세요 <laughs> <laughs> That was my, me trying to say uh, hi in Korean I'm not sure if my accent is that great though <laughs> No, you said 안녕하세요 and I was like what? <laughs> <laughs> I tried, I tried yeah. Do you like any K-pop groups? Who is your bias? 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 I don't have a bias group, but I love listening to a lot of um, girl groups. I've been, I really like Stacy, um, New Jeans, I've the Seraphin. Um, my favorite boy groups are Stray Kids, TXT, and I really love to dance. And I got into K pop because of their choreography and their dances. I and so right now here in Notre Dame, I'm part of the K-pop dance club here called Ascend. Um, we recently filmed a dance cover for Batter Up by Baby Master. Thanks. I was Ruka for it. And right now we're preparing a show for the Korean Student Association and Ascend, the K-pop club, is performing a lot of different dances. We're doing Love Scenario by Icon, we're doing and one by Jungkook standing with you. I'm not too familiar with that, but I'm going to be dancing in Blackpink's Love Sick Girls, New Jeans ETA. It'll be ETA, so fun. ETA, yeah. ETA, wow. Can oh, we're also doing Twice Heart Shaker. Oh, kind of old song. Love Sick Girls and. Yeah, we do, a, we do new songs and old songs. Mm. So it'll be really fun. So I'm really looking forward to that. Oh. Yeah. Can you tell me how do you practice? How you practice for the dances? Do you meet with other members every week? Um, we try every week, but usually we don't have the time since everyone is so busy here at college. Um, on my own, I like watching, ex I like watching the dance covers and learning it on my own. But sometimes if we have time, someone in the club would learn the dance and they would teach the other members. Ah, one person learns the choreography and then teaches other group, other members. Yes, that's how I learned ETA mm -hmm. and for Love Sick Girls, I just taught myself. You taught by yourself? Yeah. I think there are a lot of people who love to watch the choreography, but they cannot dance like mm -hmm. they do. It's really hard. <laughs> how it's... do you memorize all the choreography? I danced for nine years in ballet. A ballet. Yes, yeah, so I have some dance background. Um, and then when I got to K-pop, I started dancing all other different types of genre, like hip-hop, studio, contemporary. I also did a little bit of tap dancing for a little bit. So I think my body is just more used to learning choreography and I can get it quite quickly. Mm. I love to dance. And I'm really happy that Notre Dame um, has um, so many Asian ethnicity groups and 
Asian culture clubs that I've been joining, such as the Kpop Dance Club. Mm -hmm. Once I watched the performance of um, Ascent. Really? Yeah. It was uh, Asian Allure, the oh, event called Asian Allure. Yes, I didn't dance in Asian Allure, but I, I watched it, it was so good. I was very surprised because they're not Koreans, but they love K-pop and they dance amazing. And yes, other people in the Ascent group, they are from everywhere in the States, in every different countries. I'm part of it and I'm not from Korea, so it's very welcoming community here. And I think it's very, I love sharing different interests um, with the different students here as well. Thank you so much for your interest in Korean culture and K-pop. I'm so grateful. I was really worried about what people in the US would think of me or would think of Koreans. But I thought Korean culture was very welcomed yes. by many people, so I was yes. so happy. I think Korean culture has gained a lot of popularity and a lot more recognition in recent years with K-pop and K-drama, which is wonderful. And I'm so excited to see whether that also expands to different Asian countries as well, including Hong Kong. I also have some Hong Kong vlogs um, if you're interested in learning more about university life here in the States and life in Hong Kong. You can definitely go to my channel and check them out. Yeah, please subscribe to Scarlet <laughs> channel. Thank you, thank you. As an Asian, I think we share a lot of similarities. Yes, we definitely do. I feel like Hong Kong and Korea, they both share a culture of respecting your elders, taking care of your family, but also working hard and focusing on your studies when you're a student. That's a big difference I sense here. You mentioned etiquette, um, respect for elders. Mm -hmm. So for example, are there some things that doesn't exist in the US? For example, mm. the bowing culture, like yes. when we see elders, we always mm. announce hey, oh, yes, I yes, say yes. that. Do you do that in Hong yes. Kong too? I went to a local school back in Hong Kong before coming to the States where it was the local system. So we had basically what we call the Hong Kong DSE. I'm pretty sure it's similar to the Korean entrance college entrance exam as mm -hmm. well. And in that culture, we were taught to like bow to your teachers and say like good afternoon teacher mm -hmm. and all the time and also during classes we expect to stay quiet and raise our hands if we have questions and just um, respect the teacher and just basically absorb information but here in the states we are encouraged to ask questions we're encouraged yes. to engage in discussion based <laughs> classes where like the teacher would be like oh talk in small groups of two to three and discuss this question I, at first I found it so interesting and different um, and you're almost encouraged to make friends with your teachers there's office hours there's like you can eat with your teachers in a dining hall the US and American culture is very different in terms of that and I feel like it's emphasizing a different form of etiquette the US is encouraging collaboration and um, communication of course there is respect but I feel like the Asian cultures in Korea and Hong Kong and pretty sure in most Asian cultures they are much more emphasized with like the hierarchy and stuff I agree with you 100% yeah. like I what I realized here was that in the states professors always ask our opinions yes yes like you said we make a circle and we have to talk and we have to I share know. our opinion it was so different at first and also uh, back in Hong Kong, um, in the local school, we would sit in the same classroom and then we would have a bell signal at like, the end of each class and the teacher will come in and come out and teach different subjects. So, but here we have to move around and we go to different places, different buildings for each class. And I remember my first time when the bell rang or like it was time to leave class at 12.30, everyone just started packing up. Even the teacher wasn't stop, hasn't stopped talking, but people were packing up and leaving already. I was so surprised because I was used to having to stand up and say, thank you and have a good day, teacher. But then we didn't do that. They just left. I was oh. so surprised. But yes, that's just very different culture. And are there any things that exist in the US but don't exist in Hong Kong? For me, the thing that people say bless you 
Oh yes, yes, they, yes, yes. When they see, <laughs> yeah, when they see, <laughs> they say bless you. We don't have it in Korea. We don't care. I feel like a big difference is small talk. Like when you meet someone mm. you don't really know that well, but you're expected to talk to them. You're expected yeah. to do, oh, how are you? Oh my gosh, the weather is so nice. Mm. How have you been? Oh, how is your classes and stuff like that. Um, that doesn't. I don't think that really exists mm -hmm. in Asian culture. It was very, it was very interesting. Because, and I had to like teach myself how to engage in small talk oh. and stuff too, because you would just like pass people by and be like hi, and you have to talk for like two sentences, and then you're walking away. That's something I had to train myself to do. What surprised me was that they asked me how are you, and then they don't listen to my answer. They ask how are you, and then they go. I they know, leave I know. immediately. That was so surprising. <laughs> then why, why do, do they, they ask? ask? <laughs> Are you really interested in how it was just, I am? It was, did you get used to saying the small talk? Yes. Doing the small talk? I, after, I've been here for a few years, so now mm. I'm used to it. Yeah. I still cannot initiate the small talk yet. It's, it takes practice, it takes practice. It takes time for me. <laughs> and I wanted to ask you how people think about your nationality. Because we're Asians and I think people in US, they're really confused of our nationalities they don't know where we are from mm -hmm. and they guess like um, so are you from china or i've actually gotten a few comments saying that i look korean sometimes which is so surprising to me i always introduce myself as in hi i'm scarlet i'm from hong kong yeah i sometimes heard that i look like chinese I don't know what they. Um... I don't think Americans or foreigners are very accurate when guessing our nationality, mm. and it's a little difficult for them to ask sometimes because they think it might be rude. But I think it's alright to ask, and I'll just tell them my answer. Yeah. Mm. Really? I watched some videos that you filmed in Hong Kong, and the desserts and the food look amazing. Hong Kong food is so delicious. Yeah, it's so delicious. <laughs> So do you eat rice more than noodles or do you eat noodles more than rice in Hong Kong? I think we have a balance, but I think most people prefer rice. I think most Asian countries prefer rice. Yeah. Oh, and not bread. I like bread, but it's not so much a staple too. Mm, staple is rice. It's our commonality between Korea and Hong Kong. Yes, yeah, so a lot of a lot more vegetables, a lot of mm. um stews and a lot of soups. Are there Hong Kong waffles? Yeah, we take waffles, yeah. In Russia and in Russian in Russian speaking countries, the Hong Kong waffles are really popular. Is it square? Is it yeah. circles? Yes. Yeah, circles. Oh, it's in, in English it's translated as egg waffles. Ah. Um but in Cantonese we pronounce it Fedanzai or Mandarin it's pronounced Zidanzai. Zidanzai. It directly translates to egg, like little eggs. So mm. the egg waffles looks like little eggs. Yeah. Then do you eat Yue <laughs> Bin? <laughs> the mooncake. Oh, mooncakes. We eat it during mid autumn festival. Ah, mid autumn yeah. festival. Yeah. Uh, and you eat dumplings on the New oh, Year's? Oh, yes, you eat dumplings during New Year's. Mm. Um, then Lunar New Year's Eve. Lunar New Year. Yeah, one more commonality between us. We celebrate Lunar New Year. Yes. Which was. Uh, February 10th this year? Yes, it changes every year according yeah. to the lunar calendar. First year student, then you started to study. When did you start to study here? I started August of 2023. Oh. Um, and that was, and I'm expected to graduate in May of 2027. I'm currently a first year in a four year program. Mm. for undergraduate studies. Do you like Northern so far? It is so perfect for me. I mm. love the campus culture here. I love how everything is so central and every such a strong Notre Dame community. Everyone is so supportive and has so much school spirit for Notre Dame. And all the Asians here are very nice to each other. And even the Americans and foreigners, they're also very accepting of us. So everyone here is just super supportive and there's a lot of amazing academic opportunities for you to do research, to explore pre-professional paths. I just think Notre Dame is very perfect for me. Isn't it hard to prepare for exams? It's midterm. It's midterm season, <laughs> yeah. Um, I feel like that's 
give or take because you're learning about something you're really interested in um, you're taking classes that will help you in your future career and I don't mind studying for these exams because I they are stressful but I'm interested and I think it's an investment into your future in studies and as you mentioned I agree that this university is really supportive I was worried about how they would accept me as an Asian but there were a lot of Asian professors in France mm -hmm. I think Notre Dame is a good university it's wonderful here and I found you like um, <laughs> I found you on YouTube I was searching for Notre Dame blogs Notre Dame bloggers because I wanted to make friends and then you popped up and you had a lot of views subscribers <laughs> and I was like First time you're Asian, so I was like, "Oh, she's Asian. Let's let's watch her videos." And I was so curious where she's from. And you're like, "I'm Scarlett. I'm from Hong Kong." And then I realized that I'm international. Oh, you're an international student. So I'm so so excited when you reached out to me as well. <laughs> I was like, "Oh my gosh!" And I know there are other YouTubers and like people in Notre Dame who are online as well. So it was so exciting when you reached oh. out. How did you start to film videos on YouTube? Wasn't it mm, difficult? How did you decide it? Many people dream of filming <laughs> videos on YouTube, but it's not easy. I started doing YouTube seriously um, last summer. So before I came to Notre Dame, the summer before I came to Notre Dame in around June, I started vlogging because I loved watching other people's vlogs. And I think I can try my hand at it to see if it works out for me and I just really like filming videos and editing and making you know my life look pretty on camera and stuff it is difficult in the sense that it takes a lot of time to edit my videos since my editing style is very detailed um, but I think it's really it's really wonderful it's really, doing YouTube has really given me so many opportunities that I am really thankful for, so yeah. I agree with that. YouTube gives you a lot of opportunities. I do YouTube so we could meet each other. Yes, so I, that, met, yeah. I met Jerry through YouTube. <laughs> like that's, a, that's so fun. Yeah, YouTube can help you to make friends. <laughs> Isn't it difficult to film a vlog every time? When you take your phones and make a video, your friends don't care about it. They don't ask Oh, you. that's funny. <laughs> um, I try to vlog when I'm walking around campus when there's not a lot of people oh. um, because I don't want to invade their privacy. Um, when I'm with friends, I always ask, I always tell them I'm vlogging today um, just to let you know if you don't want to be on camera, just, let, just tell me mm -hmm. and I'll stop filming. But my friends are all very supportive and they're always excited when they should get on camera, when they get on a YouTube video. So my friends are supportive and sometimes vlogging with friends makes it more fun as well because my vlogs can also be like a, a digital diary to keep memories. Mm. So when I watch back, I'll think back to, oh yes, me and my friends did that that night in the library. And yeah, it's just, I think it's a lot of fun. It seems like you study a lot. Whenever I watch your video, you're always like studying in the library. <laughs> I think my vlogs are very realistic. I just vlog my mm -hmm. day to day life. And often that includes studying because as college students, we have so much work. Um, so I do think my videos are quite re accurate representation of my life. That doesn't make it the standard. But yes, I probably do study a lot and stuff. Maybe the factor that your vlogs are really realistic, it makes a lot of people watch <laughs> your vlogs and no, thank you. That's thank why you. your videos are so I'm so, I'm so flattered when you say you watch my videos. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, it was so fun. Thank you so much for um, coming to my YouTube channel. It was so honored oh, to be thank with you. Thank you for having me. It was so fun to talk to you yeah. today. I learned a lot about Hong Kong and I wish I could go to Hong Kong. Someday. Please visit one day. I would love to come to Korea. Oh. I really want to go. Too. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for watching today's video. Yeah, as well. thank you so much for watching this video today. I hope this video helped you to learn about the culture in Hong Kong and Korea. 
Всем спасибо большое за просмотр. Я люблю субтитры на корейском и на русском языке. Пожалуйста, поддерживайте нас, если вам интересно, каково это жить в США как интернациональная студентка. То подписывайтесь на мой канал и канал Skyland. И канал Skyland. Всем увидимся еще раз. Всем пока! Thank you.